Welcome artists to Monet Cafe Studio. My last few lessons have focused on how you can actually repurpose soft pastel surfaces. This was an older painting of mine. I just wasn't really happy with it. And so many times you can literally just brush off the old pastel. And with certain surfaces, you can even just put them under your faucet in your kitchen sink and continue to rub off the pastel. Look how great this is coming off. Now this surface I'm showing you here happens to be UART paper, UART 400. But there's another soft pastel surface that I love. It's called Pastel Matte. It's also water friendly. And these are three small paintings. This one happens to be upside down that I actually brushed off the majority of the pastel and washed it in the kitchen sink. And the reason you're seeing color on these images, kind of like a little ghost image is because I used some permanent mediums for the underpainting, such as acrylic ink or fluid acrylics. But no matter, you'll see how I can work right on top of these ghost images and recreate new paintings. Pastel mat can be purchased in pads of different colors. You can also buy it in individual sheets. And while it may seem expensive, it's really not so bad considering the fact that you can reuse these surfaces if you have a failed painting or an older painting you're not happy with. And I'm just showing you some of the pastels. I used various pastels for these paintings, but this is a Terry Ludwig set. I love some of them are missing here, but it has such good assortment of values and colors in different color families. And it's called the 60 Price Basic Values. It was uh, curated by artist Maggie Price. Another set that I use some of the pastels is the Wild Flower Set made by Earthberry Pastels. I've really loved working with this company. I'll have links to these products in the description of this video. But again, I don't just use these two sets. I just thought I'd share them with you because I use some of them. Now, I'm speeding this up because I've got to get to my August tutorials right now. But I'm just using a little Prismacolor New Pastel to get in a, a sketch. And I've got the reference image here, but I made the composition my own. I decided just to make the flowers larger, keep the same basic tree line in the distance, and just keeping a super simple sketch. Now this piece of pastel mat, I'm just gonna talk while I paint here, happened to be on a surface or, or um, a painting that I had done an underpainting. I used, I believe it was some acrylic ink that was a pretty golden and pink color. But this proves that even when you wash it off and wash the pastel off, even if you have a permanent underpainting, like acrylic ink is permanent, you can just work right over it. It turned into a nice underpainting, um, you know, anyway. So uh, now I'm just carving in some of my greens for the distant um, grasses and field. I'm using one of the Earthberry pastels here. It's a pretty kind of a brownish burgundy color for the centers of the sunflowers and it worked out great. Now I'm adding a little bit of this Earthberry color, a nice cool neutral blue gray um, to, I decided to make the left lower side of the sunflowers in shadow. So a little bit of that coolness will peek through. And I'm starting with my darkest value first um, because I'm going to add my lights on top of my darks and my lighter values on the sunflowers are gonna be the upper right. That's where my sun is hitting and you'll see me add some pretty golden colors uh, very soon. This one first is kind of like a, an orangey color um, and, and I'm going dark to light. I want those underneath colors to be darker. Um, that's really just uh, the beauty of being able to layer. It, it looks more realistic that way. Now I'm just using my finger to blend. Obviously I'm speeding this up quite a bit. I have three little paintings for you here and you can listen to my commentary here and watch the video and you can always go back on YouTube and slow it down if you just want, but turn the volume down because I'll sound really weird. Um, but you can see I added some turquoise to the sky, a little bit of yellow down at the horizon line. I'm using that same earthberry pastel to carve in um, some of the uh, darker values. Oh, I think that one is more of a purple color there um, down at the base uh, deep roots of the grasses. And see how I added a little green on those distant trees? And on top of that purple, it's like voila, 
blah. All of a sudden it looks like distant trees. I'm always amazed at the illusion of art. And uh, now I am using just a, another green, but I decided I need to lighten this up. We got some sunshine here and it's going to be layering on some of those grasses. I used this pretty lavender. I knew I needed a little bit of darker value at the upper perimeter of the sky. So it looks a little dark right now, but I'm gonna use this little kind of lavender blue pastel to kind of connect those values together. And now another pastel that's kind of a, a blue, a little bit darker to pull it down and then I'll lighten it up again. So I, I realized I got it a little too dark here. So now I'm going to pull some of that light back up into the sky. I'm trying to not draw too much attention to the sky. I want it to be just like a nice little gradation of values. And now it's time to get some of this light in. I think this is one of the golden colors from the uh, basic uh, price set of Terry Ludwig's. It has some wonderful golden colors in it. And I'm keeping this very sketchy. Uh, I did both these paintings, uh, I mean, all three of these paintings back to back. Um, they didn't take all too long, um, but some, they, they're, sometimes they're longer than I think. You get in the moment, you don't realize how long you've been painting. Um, so I wanted them to be more like little studies, just to have some fun and loosen up a little bit. Now, I'm adding some leaf shapes, uh, again, like the petals. I'm working dark to light. And uh, now I'm developing this one flower. I wanted it turned away. There is one in the reference image that's kind of turned away here. But I had a little problem with my camera. I don't know if you can see it here. It's starting, my, my lighting, something was wrong. I think there was some light shining in from my window. Oh, don't you love that purple? That was from the Earthberry set. And I love to add a little bit of purple to the centers of my sunflowers. I even add a little bit of pink in a bit. And while I'm finishing up this little painting, I thought I'd share this version you're seeing on the Monet Cafe channel is obviously free. I have another extended version of this tutorial on my Patreon page. And if you would like extra content and to receive all of the goodies I'm always talking about, you might wanna become a patron. It's only $5 a month. And one of my favorite things is I get to see your work. I just did a review today from some of the paintings of my patrons. So come join the family. It's super easy and super fun. And now let's look at this final. All right, this was just a vibrant, fun little study. I liked adding the purples and the pinks in the sunflowers. If you've been on my channel long, you know I love color. So this one was a lot of fun. And now I'm just going to show you a little speed version of the other two. Once again, created on a repurposed piece of pastel mat. This one was uh, just a little pretty little meandering stream or small river. And I noticed that my, after I started painting, I noticed that my underpainting or what you would call a ghost image was pretty green underneath. And look at the reference image, I'm working with something green. So in a perfect world, I usually like to do a warm underpainting when I have a very green subject, but I like to point that out because I get the question all the time is, is there any wrong color when you make an underpainting and no there's really not you just have a different effect and the greens don't show up as vibrant when you paint on green or even um, paint on just a you know kind of a neutral surface um, i decided to add a little sunset because there was a little bit of um, orange peeking through the uh, ghost image and so I just broke out my artistic license and turned it into a sunset. And again, I wanna stress these are studies. These were just quick little fun paintings that I did just for fun, just to relax and paint. And I gotta tell you though, doing studies is one of the greatest ways to get better as an artist you will learn so much every study you become a better artist you will start to develop your own style you'll learn new techniques and strategies so i always recommend studies all right here's the final little painting um, just really loose and impressionistic and now i'm just pulling down some of the dark with my finger and it makes a nice uh technique to to make a reflection in the water this lighting is a little better for seeing the kind of moody color palette. And now let's move on to the next painting. I used a reference image that I've used before. I believe I got this one from unsplash.com. I just love the freeness of these uh, sort of like Queen Anne's lace flowers. And I used a majority of, 
I used other pastels, but I used a lot of these little earthberry pastels. I love earthberry pastels. They're from Russia and the people uh, that own the company are so great. I do plan on doing more tutorials with them, but I wanted a really nice neutral base to this and look at some of these pretty neutrals that I'm pulling out. Some of them were too bright, I was pointing out. So I've got a few darks and a few nice neutral uh, earthy colors to get started with. I once again created a sketch using a Prismacolor New Pastel and I just used the side of it to get in some of my darker values and I wanted to keep this free and expressive and can you see that pretty neutral that I just added to the upper part of the sky um, some of those earthberry pastels I also added a gray and uh, blended a little bit I think I blended with my finger I think and uh, there's another earthberry a few of them and I wanted that nice pretty peachy rosy undertones there um, so now I'm starting to develop the flowers I've jumped ahead here to show you how I added some fun elements of color including some pretty teals and like a cranberry color for just some you know uh, flowers and bits of growth you can just imagine things when you're painting you don't necessarily even have to see it in the reference image and then I finally add some lights to the tops of the flowers some grasses and flower stems and this little study is done here's the final and also here are all three of my little studies and i also find when you work on a repurposed surface you're often more expressive and not as nervous if you're a beginner artist you're like oh what the heck i've already painted on it once so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i hope you learned something if you would like the full content or just to support this channel again become a patron on my patreon page it's only five dollars a month and i'd love to have you as part of the family all right everyone god bless and happy painting